Good evening and welcome to the Q&A for my Mexican bread zone. My name is Ramon Lamarca from the Cambridge Film Festival and we are delighted to have with us uh, the film director Nuria Jimenez Lorang. Good evening, Nuria. Hi, good evening. I'm very happy to be here also. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, your film is one of those films that, in my opinion, generates a lot of questions. So I hope the audience will have questions for you. Uh, please remember that for the questions, you can type them in, and then at the end, we'll read them out. Before we start, uh, or as the starting point, I was thinking that some viewers may have read very little about your film beforehand, which is the, the right approach. And they probably uh, know that there is found footage. So they think, well, these characters, they are real. Um, but in my opinion, the characters are neither real nor fictional. They are somewhere in between. Would you agree with that description? Yeah, absolutely. I would agree completely. It's very difficult to say, really. I mean, it's clear that they are not uh, true characters in the sense that Vivian Barrett and Leon Barrett never existed. So I've created them, but uh, there is some truth behind the characters. Although the facts have nothing to do with their real lives, there is some truth. And I think that comes also from building the characters uh, from the images. I, I worked a lot from the images, so yeah. That's very interesting. So when thinking about the story, the story was prompted by the images instead of uh, you thinking about the story and then selecting images. Yeah, absolutely. There were two parallel processes at the beginning. I was writing a lot. Uh, anything that came into my mind, I just wrote it down, uh, not thinking about the images. The whole process uh, was seven years la long, so that's why the first three years I was just writing stuff, whatever came into my mind. And on the other hand, uh, I watched the images lots of times at the same time during these three years. And from the, that moment, from the fourth year, I tried to look for the best ways of bringing uh, images and text together. And then, apart from that, the images also told me a lot of information. Uh, of course, it's a free interpretation, but they told me a lot um, about the characters. So, yeah. Apart from the, from the images, because the characters are your grandparents, yeah. how much did you know about them and how much this knowledge influenced you? Uh, I didn't know that much about my grandmother because unfortunately she died the, the year I said, um, and that, that's true. Um, but um, I think, so I couldn't really think of specific things regarding her. And she was the first, the starting character, the main character. And from that point, I also built uh, Leon Barrett's character and the, the rest of characters. So I don't think that much, but of course, everything, uh, has an influence at the end, no? Everything that I have read or listened to or watched has influenced me for sure. But I can think of many specific things. You mentioned that she, she's the main character and, and one of the important things, uh, values of our festival is, uh, I think I mentioned to you the category of F rated. Uh, which champions women in, in cinema. In your case, your film directed by you, written by you, but also, uh, as you say, the, the main character and, and the point of view is, is, is from uh, a, 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 the, the female point of view. Um, what do you think about the importance of, 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 of really championing this in a, in a world where the kind of male-orientated filmmaking and storytelling uh, is takes the, the big chunk of, of, of the films? Well, I think the more female uh, everywhere, the better, and especially in the power positions, of course, everywhere in all the sectors, and of course, in the films too. So I hope we have uh, always the same opportunities and everywhere in the world, 
uh, in this sense, no? And it's also interesting because I think in the film you can see the, um, the look or the, the look of a man, the, the eyes of a man yeah. and the image of the woman. And for me, it's also very interesting that he uh, shares his way of expressing his relationship with the world through a camera and he can share that socially and he feels pride, no? but she uh, expresses all her uh, emotions and feelings through the diary, which has this silence in itself as a format and very discreet. And for me, that is also very significant and talks also about uh, female, male thing in the 50s, especially. The footage, um, um, it's, it's fascinating because, um, well, first of all, the quality of the images, are, I mean, to have a 16 millimeter camera, not many people had it, but um, also that the quality, the way it has survived. Uh, if you think about it, there are many commercial films from the 50s and 60s that are pink now, they, they faded because the stock was, was very bad, but luckily in the case of this footage, the color, is, is wonderful. So tell us a bit about the discovery of the footage. How does it happen? What's the state, the amount yeah. of, of, of film? Well, when, when my grandfather, who plays the character of Leon Barret, uh, died uh, um, 10 years ago, I went with my mom to his place in Switzerland. That's where he used to live, uh, to help her with the stuff and everything. And then we found this, uh, wonderful treasure and all these, you know, film reels. And I wanted to, to bring them back to Barcelona where I live to digitize them and see what they contain. Because of course, I wasn't sure about the state they were. I thought this has been here for 40 years. So probably there's nothing or it's very bad quality. But then they, they were really in a very good state. And about the color, I also want to say there's a lot of wonderful work by Federico del Pero um, because there is some uniformity in the colors sometimes. When there are, I've used very different film reels with different lights and different, from different years in, from different places but I'm telling you it's the same place at the same time. And uh, you believe it thanks to this work he has done of uniforming. And there are more than 300 different uh, scenes so that he has worked on. And there is also a chromatic um, evolution in the film that is parallel to the uh, emotional evolution of the character of Vivian Barrett. And then you can see it goes from the bright colors at the beginning when they are in love in the snow and everything to weaker colors at the end where everything goes down. Uh, and, uh, but he has done that very subtly, also with a lot of subtlety and respecting a lot the original. So uh, it was a, a great work. That's, that's fascinating. And of course, there are many examples of the use of color in the cinema, like when Minelli started using it prominently for emotions and, and really to set, to set the picture. Um, how many hours of footage did, did you find? Um, a bit more than 29. 29 and something, yeah. And he had never mentioned this to you? or That's never. quite fascinating, because also you're very lucky that as, as a photographer, as an amateur photographer, the quality of, of, of the, sh the, the shots are uh, quite, quite good. He's not like moving the camera quickly up and down, left and right. He is uh, things in a quite filmic way for, for an amateur. Um, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, that was another surprise because the, the images were amazing. And in fact, from that 29 hours, it was very difficult for me to take out lots of images I loved and I wanted to include in the film. And the first versions were about five hours long and then three hours long. And then I had to take out. And I was like, no, not this image because there were really lots of fascinating images. So yeah, mm, it was amazing. I, I remember once reading a, a film theorist, the book, uh, Rudolf Anheim, And he's one of those theories that say that Silent film is more artistic, that basically when sound arrived, the dialogues in a way took some of that artistic element from cinema, which was quite unique. It's the 
telling a story just by using images, not dialogue. So I think in a way that seeing your film made me think about that and how it in a way vindicates this. So do you think the fact that you are using silent, silent images allows you more kind of artistic freedom? Yeah, I think so, because I also tried the voiceover just to discard it. I had already discarded it, but I wanted to try it, of course, to be sure. Uh, and then I really saw that, for example, I couldn't have used the sound the way I have used it if I have put voiceover. Clearly, I couldn't. It would be a much more conventional sound, probably, no? Ambient sound, etc. And also, I think there is Mm, it's so powerful and also poetic somehow to watch moving images in silence. Yeah. It's amazing and it's something we can't really do anymore because there's sound everywhere all the time. <laughs> so for me, it's almost like a, a luxury you know, to, to watch these uh, beautiful images or any moving images in, in silence. There is something very powerful and you look them in a completely different way as if there is a uh, sound. I yeah. agree, agree. I think that's one of the fascinating elements of your film, the way that it engages with the viewer. Uh, as you said, we are used nowadays to this huge amount of sound and images, fast editing, uh, things happening every second, and all of a sudden you have to, to readapt. And, and that in itself is, is a fascinating interaction. Yet, you use a bit of, of sound, very subtle. Um, could you tell us a bit about the process? How did you come up with, with this idea of using these very subtle sound effects or music? Yes, uh, well, it's the same. I also think these sounds have a lot much, much more strength than if there would be sound all the time, even if it's a very slow, but uh, low. But if there is silence, the sound, uh, is really powerful, in my opinion. And um, we have worked a lot in that uh, Jonathan Dark, now I have to mention the other name uh, of a sound uh, designer because it, it was really amazing, the job he has done. And um, we've been working a lot, and he especially, a lot of hours and months uh, for to do these sounds because we had to decide where to start the sound, where to finish it what we wanted to express and what sound should we use to, to express that emotion. And that was very difficult sometimes to decide, no? And that was amazing in, in that sense, yeah. This is your first film, um, an amazing project. Thank you. Had you wanted to do a film before or is the appearance of, of this footage, what really prompts you to say, I want to make a film? No, it was before I, I made a short film in Athens, in Greece, just by myself. I mean, I just went to Athens and I filmed uh, a cafe neo, which is like a bar with uh, old men uh, drinking coffee and smoking. And I just made this short film. Um, but there was this interest uh, for the last, you know, like 12 years or something that there is an interest, especially also in visual language, because it's something new that was really interesting for me uh, that I discovered in the last years. The um, analog, we have actually a documentary, very interesting documentary at the festival about the, the power of, of analog. I think there is a a quality of these analog, these film photochemical images that in a way allows us to get into this, this world, which is neither real nor fictional. And perhaps it would be difficult with the very kind of sharp digital imagery. Would you, would you agree with that? Yeah, maybe there's something, yeah, in between, something oniric too, no? between this uh, real digital thing that is like harder somehow, no? And the, um, the, there is something, uh, yeah, for me more oniric or softer that uh, maybe has this half uh, world thing that you're saying, no? Between fiction and reality, yeah, possibly. 
Tell us a bit more about this. Obviously, this is this is the theme um, that one of the themes uh, in the film. You know, this fiction, this reality, this this true um, false. Tell us a bit more uh, about your idea and, and 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 what you wanted to to do with with this subject. Um, well, I just wanted to feel complete freedom uh, doing. Um, building something with these images, working with these images and relating myself also with, with these images. And for me, that has been a beautiful process, also sometimes a bit desperating, but it was very interesting in that sense. Also, um, I didn't want to tell the story of my grandparents because I didn't want to you know, tell about them or the real stories. Uh, and that might sound a bit, uh, might sound a bit contradictory, but I feel very comfortable using uh, the images, but not the real lives. Uh, but it was very interesting because when my mother watched the film, she told me that I had made a more truthful portrayal of my grandparents than if I had told their true story. And for me, this was very significant and, and also I think beautiful in, in some way because it means you can also express you know, a truth through a fiction. And um, probably if I would have tried to stick to the facts of their real lives, I would have lied much more. <laughs> and it would be more false somehow, you know. Absolutely fascinating and interesting. Have you ever thought what they would have um, thought themselves <laughs> if they had seen the film? <laughs> yes, I have thought of it, but... Um, I have no idea, really. I mean, I I want to think that uh, they would have liked it, but it's very difficult. It's like uh, this kind of speculations that when you start, you can go to very far away places, so I prefer not to. <laughs> I think, uh, well, my opinion is that the, the, the film is gorgeous and it is very nice, the story. So, you know, in a way, it's like you know, the, the kind of, amateur films that they always, in a way, they were showing to the friends. So there was this sense of, of sharing. So in a way, it's, it's gone farther, much farther than he would ever have dreamt uh, as, a, as an amateur filmmaker. So probably uh, your grandfather would be like, wow. <laughs> in that sense, I think also because the, these images have been 40 years in this dark basement. So for me, there's also some beauty in giving them a new life. And uh, I have got so many comments of people who have watched the images telling about these wonderful images that in that sense, I think he would be happy that so many people would appreciate uh, his, his images, yeah. Absolutely. We have uh, the first uh, question from, from the audience. Uh, Anthony is asking, did the 16 millimeter cameras themselves survive as there must have been a choice not to shoot film with sound, at least in the latter part of the footage? So basically, I, if I understand it correctly, it would be to check if the cameras, uh, any of them had sound or were all silent, if they survive. They didn't survive, unfortunately, no. Uh, there was also some eight millimeters material and that camera did survive, but not the, not the 16 millimeter cameras, no. And they were all mute, all the material I got. There was no sound in any of them. What, what has been the reaction from, because you've shown the film already in several festivals, um, obviously, the, the narrative, uh, I always enjoy when filmmakers change narrative and, and, ex, uh, and experiment with storytelling, uh, but audiences tend to get used to certain ways of, of having stories told. So what has been the reaction so far? Yeah, it's been uh, also very interesting because of course also each person sometimes tells you completely different things. But in general, there is uh, something that caught my attention a lot, which is that many people have difficulties in, believe, or sorry, in not believing that it is true. So the film, and it, it has a relationship with the film because the film also talks about the desire we have to believe 
in things like a magic pill or a guru or God or a love relationship or something. And, and the, the film itself, and for me that's cinema too, it has something um, of that. And people, even when they see the final credits, they still continue asking, but then he didn't have an accident, but then he she did, had children, but then this didn't happen. And it's over and over again, even if I have already told that it's all a fiction story, you know, in that sense. And that, for me, there's some beauty in that because it has to do with the term illusion and in both senses, no? It's a, and that's cinema for me. And oh, absolutely. What, I think it's an empirical evidence of, of the power of cinema. Yeah. Uh, we have a question from Mike. Uh, Mike is asking, what documentary filmmakers have you most been influenced by? It's very difficult to say um, for, for this film because I love for I love uh, many documentary filmmakers that have nothing to do with with this film, so it's a bit difficult to to know uh, what are the references. I think everything that I have read or watched in the cinema and documentary films or master classes I've been from filmmakers I admire, that has also always influenced me a lot, but I can't really tell what. Uh, I, I love, for example, I don't know, Wang Bing, which, who is a Chinese uh, documentary filmmaker I admire very much, or Frederick Weisman. That, for example, they are completely different styles. Uh, Agnes Varda, of course, etc. There's a long list. Um, but I, don't, I can't really say that uh, that was a reference for that film. Everything has been a great reference. Sorry, Mike, I haven't been very helpful <laughs> with the answer. Um, there is another question. Um, enchantingly provocative, uh, cheeky, reminds me in a good way of Nathalie, uh, 2003, Le Conte's A Promise, and Camera Catalonia's own La Vida Lliure in what we make of what we see. Uh, so that's a nice comment from uh, Anthony. Yes, I think uh, some of the adjectives could be found after. Thank some. you very much. Thanks a lot for the comments. I really appreciate it. And also thanks for watching the film. <laughs> Thank you. After um, such a, uh, a, a, an interesting but artistic experimental uh, project, um, what is what are your plans for the future? Would you like to go into some more conventional or would you like to continue? Uh, I, I first want to write the Kalia Pali's book. I'm writing the, the, <laughs> the Red Book by Kalia Pali. That's <laughs> a project I want to. <laughs> because it's fun and uh, I love to do these kind of things. If I can work from the same place, more or less I've been uh, making the film, for during seven years, then uh, the next project uh, is fine, as long as I do it from that point, no? So I would like to write this book and also maybe try to write a fiction film, but you never know. So you, like, so you like the idea to, to work with, with your stories more than working with someone else's stories? Both things, because also if some, something comes up, you know, like an interesting character or a story that really attracts me, that is already there. I'm very happy to go there if I have the chance, of course, and uh, film it. Yeah, sure. So no, with all the remaining material, would, would there be the chance of a sequel <laughs> of uh, Leon's and Vivian's uh, story? <laughs> yes, yes, maybe I, I can tell the story from the Leon's uh, point of view, because it's also, it could be very interesting and there could be like a second part, but maybe in some years, because- <laughs> A little bit <laughs> of a distance. Yes, uh, break, yeah. <laughs> Excellent. Um, it's been uh, great having you and having your film and, and discussing it. Um, we wish you the best for your next project. We'll certainly read the book when it's, when it's out. <laughs>
Uh, thank you to all the audience for following this Q&A. We have more uh, Catalan films. We have a world premiere of a fantastic documentary on Keith Haring in Barcelona in 1989 and the fight against AIDS. And many, many more other interesting films and documentaries in Amplify Festival, of course. Thank you to all our partners, uh, in particular for Camera Catalonia, to Institut Ramon Llull and Catalans UK for their support. Continue enjoying the festival. Thank you very much, Nuria. And thank you. Thank you very much. I was very happy to be here. Thanks. Thank you. Good night. Good night.